All right, we are live. That was like the longest spinning circle ever <laughs> as we tried to start the webcast. Welcome, everybody. Uh, hey, it is hey. so great to see so many uh, people already here. How many do we expect to attend? Oh, that's a great question. We're going to have hundreds of people with us tonight, uh, if not get into the thousands. And so, oh my goodness, people are already telling us where they're calling in from. Uh, hello from New Jersey, Illinois. Do we have a delay right now? Am I am I delayed here? No, you oh, sound good. It's good. Okay. Pam was just like holding really still. I thought she was frozen, but <laughs> okay. There was the mannequin challenge. You didn't know? It was the mannequin yeah, challenge. That's right. Oh my gosh. How that is like a blast from the past. There you go. <laughs> All right. Illinois, New Jersey, Colorado, oh, Rochester, so New York, good. Pasadena, California, Charlotte, wow. North Carolina, Memphis, Tennessee, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, San Antonio, Texas, Pittsburgh, so Pennsylvania, Tennessee, New Jersey. Wow, it's great to have all of you joining us. Vancouver, Washington, it's so great to see all of you joining us. We're so excited to have you tonight. It's going to be a powerful time together. Wonderful. Well, um, you know, I always hesitate to do this because usually somebody uh, wants to slash my tires when I talk about the decent weather that we have in Texas. Although I don't know, actually, Nate usually takes the cake in that regard because he's in <laughs> Florida, where it's beautiful and temperate and sunny all the time. But um, so I'm curious to know who has the hottest weather right now. Uh, we are, I think we hit 99 degrees here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. No, 91. We're 91 right now. Pam, did you beat that? Did you beat that down in Houston? No, we're 90 right now. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah. Okay. Who Let's has, see. Nate, how are you? It's only 83 here right now, but it still <laughs> feels only. like 91. So <laughs> it never feels very comfortable, even if it is cooler. Yeah. Awesome. No, so we're all hanging in there. Hopefully, uh, those of you up north, you're enjoying uh, a break from the snow. We know it's not going to be too much longer before uh, you got some light dusting on your doorstep, right? Uh, when I used to work for 40 Days for Life National, so funny. We, we laughed whenever uh, we, we call it the spring campaign, because if you did the spring campaign in Anchorage, Alaska, or Fargo, North Dakota, or whatever, that was not a spring campaign, sister friends. Like, that was a <laughs> winter campaign. So a lot of persevering in that spring. But anyways, it's great to see so many uh, people coming to join us from all over the United States. Thank you all so much. Uh, this is going to be a really exciting event. So if you're here for the How to Close Your Local Abortion Facility webcast, you are in the right place. Um, I dare say that this is one of the most audacious titles of a pro-life webcast that has ever been, right? Uh, but we promise we do have some information to back it up tonight. Of course, all underscored uh, by the power of prayer, <laughs> the greatest right. tool that we have to close our local abortion facility. So we're so excited to have all of you. If you haven't said hi yet, we would love to know where you're calling in from. We are going to get rolling here in just a moment, but uh, it's really good to see uh, the names, even if we we can't see your faces. But if anybody else wants to say where they're, uh, you know, calling in from, right, where they are so, tonight, we'd love to see. So I, I think I found our person who is dialing in from the furthest away. There is somebody on tonight from Nigeria. How awesome is wow, that? Wow! So gra glad to have you joining us tonight. And then literally coast to coast, New York awesome. to California, and everywhere in between. Yeah, so there's a Watumka, Alabama. So roll. God. That's right. Roll <laughs> Tide all day, every day. We all bleed crimson. I'll make everybody mad by saying it now. <laughs> we we want to we want to have togetherness tonight, Nate. Like true <laughs> fellowship. I don't know if that's the road we want to go down. Sorry, if Nate just insulted you. Oh, we really do welcome hilarious. you here. But <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. Okay, well, Nate, I think we're about ready to get started. How does that sound? That sounds great. Well, if, we, if we're ready, let's go. Let's do it. Well, good evening again and welcome to How to Close Your Local Abortion Facility, the pro-life webcast event of the season sponsored by Sidewalk Advocates for Life. I, you know, we know your time is precious, so I want to take a moment just to thank you so much for being with us this evening. We have vital information to share with you, and we aim to do that in one hour or less. I'm Nate Robertson, Vice President of Outreach for Sidewalk Advocates for Life, and it's my great joy to be your MC for our short but very important time together this evening. First, I wanna address the elephant in the room, right? 
some of you may be saying, wow, this is a pretty audacious title for a webcast. How to close your local abortion facility. I mean, if there's a specific formula or strategy, why isn't everyone doing it, right? The fact is there is a strategy that's working and we're about to share with you it tonight. To date, we've seen by God's grace, 27 facility closures in our ministry alone. But of course, a lot of folks aren't aware of it or not everyone is doing it because it takes perseverance. But of course, we know that it's worth it. Even so, for those of you who won't perhaps be the ones on the ground employing this specific strategy at, at your local abortion facility, there are some big ways that everyone can be a part of this strategy and help to end abortion in your community and beyond. We'll review those ways here in just a bit. Joining us tonight is Ex Executive Director of Pro Love Ministries, Pam Whitehead. She's become a great friend of mine. She is our keynote presenter, and she's going to fill in more important details about why this strategy is working and the best tips to implement it for success. At the end of the day, remember that abortion-free communities lead to abortion-free states. Abortion-free states lead to abortion-free countries. So again, we believe that just you doing your part to learn how to help end abortion where you live is a profound step in the battle for life. More specifically, here are the three things we're going to cover tonight. Number one, a research-based, experience-proven strategy to close abortion facilities. With critical insights gained from the closure of abortion facilities throughout the United States that can help end abortion in your community. Yes, that's right, I said your community. Number two, three keys to unlock this life-saving strategy. The three essential items you need to reach abortion vulnerable women, men, and facility workers and ultimately see the end of abortion in your area. And number three, how you can help bring an end to abortion in America. A new action plan to help save more lives and end abortion in cities across the United States will be announced on this webcast with easy ways for everyone to join this groundbreaking movement for life. So again, tonight we have with us Laura Musica, pro-life attorney and president CEO and founder of Sidewalk Advocates for Life, and Pam Whitehead, Executive Director of Pro Love Ministries. I'll be sharing a thought or two as I help us move along with our webcast this evening. And again, if you just logged in, I'm Nate Robertson, Vice President of Outreach for Sidewalk Advocates for Life. Don't forget, at the end of this event, we'll be sharing a huge announcement that will unveil a plan in the battle for life that will no doubt help save more lives and end abortion in more communities. So you don't wanna miss that. Give us this hour and we'll give you this strategy. And from that, we're believing God will speak to your heart about the next steps you're called to take to help end abortion in America. Before I pray tonight, I just wanted to share two quick stories. I wanted to link two stories together tonight. One that started just right at four years ago and another that just happened a week and a half ago. I've had great opportunity to be on the sidewalk of, of America's abortion facilities. And that story that started four years ago was just outside of Newark, New Jersey. And that mother who chose life on that sidewalk after some amazing interaction that I was able to have with her that day and for the weeks to come, her little girl will turn four in December. And I still get updates from them on a regular basis because of the life-saving strategies that we have with Stavok Advocates for Life and how we were able to impact her life and change the trajectory of not just her life, but generations to come. And then I just wanna share a week and a half ago, I, I had the great opportunity to be in, in the Miami area and was out on the sidewalk with one of our newest team members, Linda with Stavok Advocates for Life national team. And we visited an abortion facility and we weren't even there very long. And within just a few minutes, we were able to reach out to a young, a young woman who had come that morning. Linda in her Spanish was able to interact directly with her. And in just a few minutes, that young woman chose our offer of hope and help and left that facility without going through with her abortion. See, it's timeless. No matter how many years ago it is or how recent it is, it works. What we have developed at Sidewalk Advocates for Life works. 
And we know that you can be a part of seeing more and more of those stories, like this mother in New Jersey and like this mother in Miami, Florida. So with that, will you join me in a moment of prayer as we kick things off tonight? Dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be here together tonight to talk about what you have employed as strategies to end abortion in more cities across this great nation and ultimately make America abortion free. God, we thank you for the efforts of Sidewalk Advocates for Life, for Lauren, our, our board, for all of our staff, and for all of the volunteers by the thousands that have been trained around America who tirelessly put themselves right there at the front lines to see women and men and abortion workers have heart changes. God, I pray you bless them tonight. God, tonight I pray that you would bless those who have been on the receiving end of the efforts of Sidewalk Advocates for Life. Bless those women and their families as they have chosen life. And God, continue to guide them into continual life-giving um, opportunities throughout their life as they continue on their journey. God, I pray you bless us tonight. Bless each person who's joining us. God, I pray that you would touch our hearts with what you are calling us to do, to be more involved in seeing abortion end in our local communities. God, will give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, what with that, let's get started. Hey, Lauren, how are you tonight? I'm doing great, Nate. How are you? Doing great. Well, I, I know that we're going to bring Pam into the conversation pretty quick, but tee us up first. You know, let's dive directly into item one. What is this strategy that has already closed 27 abortion facilities with more that are pending in Sidewalk Advocates for Life alone? And for everyone on the line tonight, what do they need to know to help close the abortion center in their backyard? Yes, big questions that we're going to be talking through this evening. Well, first, let me just say thank you, Nate, for emceeing our time together tonight. And to all of you joining us tonight from across the United States and even now internationally, whatever uh, hat it is that you wear in the pro-life movement and beyond, just know it's a privilege to join with you tonight in the mission to save lives and end abortion through truly the most powerful tool that we have at our disposal, and that is the power of his love. You know, Nate, you brought up that this is a pretty audacious title for a webcast, and I want to address that briefly as well. You know, I, I got wind that ahead of this event that there were some pro-abortion folks who signed up, and they are, at least right now, quietly listening in the background. And I want everyone to know, however you come to us, however you identify yourself, uh, we welcome you here. We've got nothing to hide. If some of you came here thinking that the way that we were going to answer the question of how to close your local abortion facility was through something weird or something ugly, well, I'm just going to say you're in the wrong place. <laughs> um, we believe that the right way to do this is through the power of prayer and peaceful outreach to clients who are hurting and workers who are hurting. And that last part, peaceful outreach, it's, it's kind of a pregnant word. That, that last part is so important in how we do that. There's a particular point to it that is key for what we're discussing tonight, which I'll explain here in a bit. It's not just going to the sidewalk and it's not just checking a box, right? For those of you who are getting acquainted with us at Sidewalk Advocates for Life, the host of this event, we're the largest sidewalk advocacy organization around the globe. In a nutshell, we train, equip, and support folks who have a heart to go to where abortions take place and offer loving, life-affirming alternatives to those in crisis, as well as abortion workers. And in seven years, by God's grace, we've grown to 214 locations worldwide, and we're now celebrating nearly 13,500 babies saved, 78 workers who have left the business, and that includes most recently an abortionist who walked out to the sidewalk and told the sidewalk advocates he could no longer do it. They had a huge effect on him. Glory to God for that, right? And then 27 facility closures. And once again, we give God all the glory and all the praise because it's his grace, his love, 
his hope that we are offering out on the sidewalk. This isn't Lauren doing this because Lauren sometimes has a microphone or, you know, shows up to the sidewalk looking nice uh, after taking a shower or something like that, right? There's nothing magic about me or us. It's that we're carrying his, his love out to the sidewalk, his hope out there. And that's the game changer. And again, I just want to thank all of you tonight, our heroes, because we can, you know, say this or say that, but it's you who says yes to God and puts it into practice. You're here tonight because you care about life, because the idea that we have lost 63 million children under the banner of so-called safe and legal choice grieves your heart as well it should. But bravo, it has moved you to action, to be here tonight and to do something about it or to take your efforts to the next level. Now, many people are not aware that at the helm of this tragedy of abortion in America is Planned Parenthood. They are America's abortion empire, committing over 340,000 abortions every year in this country alone. This statistic rarely gets out. We want people to understand this and share this with their friends and neighbors. Planned Parenthood, their big money maker is abortion. It accounts for over 60% of all of their clinic income. But ironically, Planned Parenthood is utterly replaceable. Planned Parenthood offers extremely limited healthcare services at best, an extremely small menu of women's services, federally qualified, Federally qualified health centers and other community health organizations outnumber Planned Parenthood's more than 20 to 1. They do everything a Planned Parenthood does and so much more. Meanwhile, this is an organization that has been caught aiding and abetting underage sex trafficking, selling baby body parts, overbilling Medicaid, giving fetal development misinformation. I mean, that rap sheet goes on and on and on. And bottom line here, what we need to share with our friends and neighbors is that women deserve better than scandal ridden Planned Parenthood. But in light of all of this, you know, sometimes we're tempted to throw our hands up in the air and say, oh my goodness, who can even begin to conquer this problem? Even when it comes to our local abortion facility, it feels like a great big David and Goliath battle, right? But you and I do not sit here tonight as a people of despair, but a people of great hope who know the story of the cross. And we know that when God's people show up in that spirit of resurrection power to be his hands and feet at the abortion facility, it is truly a game changer. And don't just take this from me. I want to give you a couple of concrete statistics that show this firsthand. Our friend, Former Planned Parenthood director Abby Johnson tells us that at the last Planned Parenthood conference she went to before she came to our side of the fence, they said that when there is a peaceful presence in front of their facilities, they regularly document up to a 75% no-show rate. That is absolutely stunning. So just by you being there, It is a game changer. So keep that in mind. Even on days where you wonder if you've had any effect at all, statistically, you have. And Abby's abortion worker ministry that she started after she left Planned Parenthood and then there were none, says that over 60%, so the majority of the workers coming to them, got information from someone on the sidewalk. Now, one of the questions I get when I travel the country and train and support folks who are doing this beautiful activity out on the sidewalk to help save lives and to ultimately end abortion in their communities, you know, they say, Lauren, you know, we see beautiful things happen when God's people go to the sidewalk, but we also see that Sidewalk Advocates for Life seems to be experiencing what we might call the miraculous, right? So what is it maybe that you all are doing that we can learn from or, you know, even can jump into as sidewalk advocates, right? So there's a couple of things that I want to bring up, and this is going to dovetail into that first question, which is that strategy, that overall strategy that can help end abortion in your local community. So number one is that we're present in prayer. And I'm going to guess that if you're a person of faith and conscience and you go to an abortion facility, we absolutely share that in common. And that's the most important thing. That is the foundation. That is our strength by which we can reach out to clients and to workers effectively, right? So I want everybody to know that anything I'm suggesting tonight, it is with the understanding that this happens through the power of prayer. And then number two, we've received this insight in prayer, right? That when we go to the sidewalk, we're, we're then from that strength of prayer, reaching out with our words, but we're doing it in a very specific way. We are, when we reach out, 
fulfilling the concrete needs of clients and workers, showing each person in front of us how indeed Planned Parenthood is utterly replaceable. So to more directly answer item number one, the secret sauce, this strategy that is now by God's grace closed, you know, just 27 abortion facilities in our ministry alone with more pending. Think about it this way. Planned Parenthood operates as a business. OK, so the idea is that when you're present on site in prayer and silent witness, it is indeed enough to turn some people around. I mean, how many people have we talked to who have said, you know, if there had even been one person standing there praying, I would have made a different decision. Or we have women who will walk up to us on the sidewalk and say, I was praying for a sign. I saw you praying and you were my sign. Period. End of story. They're done. Right. But. For most people arriving there, even the people working there, they have a human need that they're trying to fill. And there's no greater example of this than our Lord who modeled this when he went around filling physical needs and their heart was open to the spiritual need, right? But the thing with the folks arriving there is that they've been lied to. They've been sold a bill of goods and they've been told that Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry is the answer to their problems. And these folks are looking to fill sometimes very, very desperate needs. So when we're on site to stand in the gap with the power of prayer behind us, we reach out to women and men with news of free life affirming resources like the local pregnancy resource center in their backyard or other pro-life healthcare alternatives. And when we do that, we are starting to now greatly affect their business model because we're redirecting people away from the abortion industry to these life affirming services. So in a sense, we are hitting the demand side of Planned Parenthood's business, right? Then when we start developing relationships with abortion workers and letting them know that indeed there is a better life waiting for them after Planned Parenthood, starting with Abby Johnson's abortion worker ministry, and then there were none who can help them begin that healing process, who can help them basically with all those physical needs under the sun, whether it be employment help or financial help or whatnot, guess what? That's hitting the supply side of their business. So we are the gateway on the sidewalk. This is how we should all see ourselves if you are a peaceful, well-trained sidewalk counselor. We're the gateway to real help in the community for both clients and workers. And it's a winning strategy because it hits them at both ends. So that's item number one, okay? You have to beat Planned Parenthood at its own game. They operate like a business. If you reach enough of the demand side, right? Reach enough clients, you hit the demand side. If you reach enough workers, you hit the supply side and then it's hard for them to stay open. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, you know, how much business do I have to redirect in order to see my abortion facility close? And let me answer that by a quick story. The community in Las Cruces, New Mexico employed this strategy. And on paper, it looked like to them, they had only affected about 10% of the abortion facilities business, okay? So that means confirmed about 10% were turning away, okay? And it took them a little bit to get to that. But we know from the statistics, no doubt, that it was much higher than that, okay? So just start with the person in front of you. What does that person need? How can I best love them today? And one day you're gonna look back and see a great harvest. But the other thing, and this goes to item number two, Nate, right? We talked about the three things that you need to ensure that your outreach is actually effective. In other words, that number one, it's like the three keys to unlocking the strategy, right? And that is, here are the three things that you need. I'm gonna rattle them off and address each one really quick. And then we're gonna bring Pam into this conversation, but it's training, tools, and support. So first off, if you don't get thorough training for the sidewalk, something at some point is gonna throw you off. Um, I, I will say that I was not one of those people that went to the sidewalk and just instinctively knew what to do. Now, Linda, who just joined our national team, actually instinctively picked this up and just came right into our ministry like it was old hat, right? But Linda also has a testimony and a personal experience in this regard. And a lot of women who have walked into an abortion facility have great insights in this regard. But a lot of us don't just come to the sidewalk knowing what to do. We learn from other great saints who have gone before us, right? 
um, you know, maybe you'll get stumped because you don't know how to reach out to other types of clients that Planned Parenthood has servicing their center. What do you do with the well woman client? What do you do with the client going in for STD testing? How do you redirect them to a pro-life healthcare alternative? You know, we talk about that in our training as well. But either way, good training is going to speak to your confidence. So you want to find good training, right? Number two, tools. You want to make sure you have good literature because literature can speak for you when you can no longer speak to that client. What are you wearing? That's also a tool because that's how you present yourself to that client. You're, you're competing with multi-million dollar Planned Parenthood. You don't want to go out there in your basketball shorts and your t-shirt. Okay. We want to go out there looking like someone you know, you would want to talk to if you were in crisis, fetal models, you know, think about things that can reinforce that offer of help, right? And make sure it's modern, okay? We don't need to be pulling our 80s literature out of our pocket. We have millennial and Gen Z women that are walking into these facilities. It's time for an upgrade, folks, right? And that's something that's so exciting is when we get these new materials in people's hands, they really do see that indeed it makes a difference. And then number three, and I would even say that this is the thing where even our sidewalk advocates get tripped up and that is support right for example in our ministry we've got three women who are full-time and what they do all day every day is they advise our 214 locations but you know we're not going to always chase people down and say oh are you having problems yes we invite we invite how are you guys doing you know is there there a challenge that we can pray over that we can troubleshoot for you but sometimes people will get to a challenge and they'll just sit there ra rather than you know Again, troubleshooting it and fellowshipping and praying over it, right? So again, this goes to perseverance and you can't persevere properly without taking a hard look sometimes at what you're doing, tweaking your outreach and then finding feedback and support. I would say that if you're going to an abortion facility and you're not seeing at least one turnaround a month, that's really something to think about. Then you might want to look at, hey, you know, are we... Uh, inviting enough people to stop? Are we, you know, there's so many questions that you could ask. Um, and, and that's something that we love to do is to take a strategic look at what you're experiencing. And quite often, Nate can speak to this, Pam can speak to this. It's just very simple changes that can really change the game out there. So anyways, if you want to get to the sidewalk to help end abortion in your community, Sidewalk Advocates for Life has a three-point program that includes training tools and support. It's ready to go to bat for you and your community. Of course, if you have what you need, we say, thanks be to God. And, you know, we're just happy to cheer you on and, and to pray for you. Um, but I know a lot of you on the line tonight cannot get to the sidewalk. And at the very end of the hour, we're getting a ready, ready to announce this huge plan to help save more lives and bring an end to abortion in more communities across the United States through the power of, of prayer and, and his grace. And there's absolutely a key role for you, even if you physically cannot get to the sidewalk. So again, I know we need to bring Pam into the conversation. She's going to fill in some great details here from her perspective. And then even then we've got also a message from former Planned Parenthood director, Abby Johnson, we're going to play in a bit, but that's the summary in a nutshell. So there you go, Nate, we knocked out one, two, and three is pending. Thanks so much, Lauren. Incredible information. You know, and I just want to circle back and emphasize that with, with training is so key, how, how, how training can be so key. Every business that's successful, has training to make sure that people who are working in their business know exactly what to do, when to do, and the most effective ways to do it. And like you were just saying, we as we continue to be honing in on being effective and using the training that has been put together by Sidewalk Advocates for Life, using the tools and using the support, which is again, so key, we continue to see life change like never before. So thanks again, Lauren, so excited for everything that you are sharing and everything that's happening so far. So as promised, folks, I feel like I need a drum roll. Our keynote presenter this evening is Pam Whitehead, Executive Director of Pro Love Ministries. Pam really has become such a dear friend to me and my wife, Kristen, and just so blessed to have her as a part of our life. And she's gonna unpack further how we can best reach those that are servicing the abortion facility, right? Whether they're the clients seeking abortions, or the workers facilitating those abortions. Pam, thanks again for being with us. Feel free to jump right in and take it away. Yeah, thank you, Nate, and thanks, Lauren. And uh, I just really appreciate you and all the work that you've put into this, that you've put into training people all across the country. You know, um, I am Pamela Whitehead. I'm the executive director of Pro Love Ministries, which was founded by uh, Abby Johnson. 
Some of you know of us, some of you don't. Uh, Pro-Life Ministries is a ministry that was founded to fill gaps in the pro-life movement. And if you've been doing this for any amount of time, you've hit walls before. You've uh, encountered women, you've encountered workers, you've encountered people that you've been unable to serve, uh, that you simply had to say, that's all I can do, or I'm not sure how to help you. Well, at Pearl of Ministries, we have affiliates, which are already established 501c3 organizations. And these organizations are serving people who previously um, unseen, unheard, and underserved. So uh, when you think about people like that, you would think of abortion workers, uh, think of abortion survivors, think of women who conceive and rape, think of single moms, uh, mothers with multiple children. Um, so we also have projects. And one of those projects that we've spearheaded is Loveline. And Loveline is a resource that is available to you. It's available to every pregnancy center in the United States. Uh, and we're here to supplement the great work that's already across the country. So it's a crisis text line that provides case management services to single and expecting mamas. So uh, these women are people who've already help and they can't find what they need or they've heard over and over again. And so we work to get her the yes that she needs. So many of you are probably wondering, Pam, how did you get involved in all this? How did you ever even get started? You know, I'm just a, a, a country girl from Alabama. Um, I had no uh, upbringing in the church. I was, um, I told people I was a heathen most of my life. Um, but in 2009, I had a radical conversion and I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And when that happened, a lot of things changed for me. And the main thing that changed for me was my worldview. And I began seeing people differently. I began seeing people as human beings, um, and I began to respect that every person was an image bearer. They were made in the image of God. And so in 2012, it was an election year, and um, there was a Democrat running for president who I had previously voted for. And um, during this time, I had begun to read the word of God, and I'd gone through my own healing process from a past abortion experience and many other traumas that I had endured. And the Lord really pressed upon my heart to be for women what I've never had, to stand in the gap, to be a rescuer. And so um, someone was admonishing people to go and pray in front of their local abortion facility. And I was like, I know how to pray. I can do that. And um, so I was waiting on someone. I was in this group of people on Facebook. It had like 10,000 people in it. And I live in Houston, Texas. And I was waiting on someone to gather, uh, you know, people and, and uh, organize this thing and get them going. And I waited and I waited and no one was doing it. Now, that's not to say that no one was doing anything in Houston. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that here in front of me was this opportunity. And out of 10,000 people from around the country, no one in that group of people was organizing anything. And so I began to pray and the Lord really pressed it on me. What are you doing? So I contacted the person who was head of the group. And, you know, I heard from all these people, we need to pray in front of this facility. But there were certain things that I was thinking about that no one seemed to really be talking about. And I felt kind of silly asking these questions, but they were valid questions like, um, what am I supposed to wear? And where do I go to the restroom? And what happens well, you know, I'm a person of faith. I'm believing if I'm going out there and I'm going to talk to women that they're going to they're going to talk to me. And so what's going to happen when she turns away? Where do I send her? So all of these questions I needed answers to. But there was no training. This was 2012. And I, I had no idea where to go for training. There wasn't a national effort at that time that I knew about. I'm not Catholic. I come from a non-denominational church. And so, um, you know, it hadn't, there was no, no movement that had um, come into my church or into our non-denominational churches that I knew of uh, telling us about any kind of training. And so I go out on the sidewalk and we started doing it and we saw women turning away just by the power of prayer and by our yes, our obedience. So a couple of years later, I was praying throughout this whole, this whole time. And a couple of years later in 2014, 
Lauren Musica started Sidewalk Advocates for Life, and I thank God for that. Um, and in 2015, I, I left my job that I was working, and I began working for Abby Johnson as a client manager for, and then there were none. So I've been serving abortion workers and pregnant women in difficult circumstances for almost a decade. And so I come to you with experience. In no way am I an expert. I'm not saying that I'm an expert, but I do have experience. And um, because I've been serving in Houston, where the largest Planned Parenthood in the nation is, and one of the busiest private clinics in the country, Houston Women's Clinic, I do see a lot of different situations and circumstances. So I'm coming to you information based on that experience. Uh, we recognize and realize that we have to individualize the care that we offer people. There is no cookie cutter uh, solution that's going to fit every single woman in every single situation. That's why we have to be constantly in prayer and also seek counsel. So we, at, and then there were none, and at Pearl of Ministries through Loveline, we have streamlined the process that works to provide for the needs of women and workers. And so we've adjusted, we've shifted, and we've adapted over the years based on needs. Um, we communicate as a staff consistently. We work together to find solutions and we strategize and plan on how we will dismantle the abortion industry. At Pearl of Ministries, we have Check My Clinic, which is uh, very specific, as well as Hurt After Abortion. These are two projects that focus specifically on and taking legal action for physical harm done to women and the disregard for safety inside the clinics. So you can find the links to those resources at pearlofministries.org uh, under projects, the attack projects. All right. So that's check my clinic and hurt after abortion. We have a process to help women and workers that has four essential parts. Uh, we have intake. We do an intake. We have a needs assessment, case planning, and then monitoring the delivery of services. So these services, many of them are provided by our ministry. So for abortion workers, they receive limited financial assistance. They receive legal help if needed. They receive job search help, resume writing help, therapy, support group meetings, scholarships, and healing retreats in phases. And all of this is at no cost to the worker. For single and expecting mothers, we provide material and financial assistance financing, therapy at no cost to her, support group meetings, scholarships, job search, resume writing help, and more. Every intake for And Then There Were None and for Loveline is done by the same person. Our intake managers, Chris and Nayeli, um, they provide a quality assurance check by being the person who answers the calls. There's no confusion and there's no miscommunication. So once a client has completed that intake process, they're assigned a client manager or a case manager who will assess their needs and make a case plan. That will ensure that their needs are met in a timely and dignified manner. Now, you're wondering, you know, well, some of this stuff we can do. Well, when you go to an emergency room, Right. Say you have an emergency and, and if you're diagnosed with something, they refer you to a doctor who handles that specific ailment. Say they find a heart condition. They're going to refer you to a cardiologist. Right. Well, and then there were none specializes in helping abortion workers and Loveline specializes in supplementing the work of the local pregnancy center by meeting needs that they can't. Now, your prayers and your love and your presence, they make a huge difference on the sidewalk. Your words may fail. But the way that you make a woman or a clinic worker feel will last for eternity. Never forget this. If you are advocating in front of an abortion facility, your signs should always point women and clinic workers to resources, not to your opinion. A sign that says um, abortion is murder is not helpful or a sign that says abortion kills children is not helpful. And it's not offering a solution. And actually a sign that says abortion is murder is pretty debatable in a lot of circles. So the sidewalk is not the place for debate. Um, a sign that says abortion kills children doesn't lead a woman to a resource. Are you trying to judge her or draw her? The sidewalk's not the place for a protest. You want to appear as a haven, a safe place, a place where clinic workers or women will run to, not a person that they would run from. 
So assume in choosing your advocacy tools that you will not have any other form of communication, just like Lauren said. Your literature, your signs, and your body language must communicate for you. What are you trying to say? And what is your purpose for saying it? Is it about you or is it about her? Are you trying to be right? Or are you trying to help? No way I'm an expert, like I said before, um, but because of the advocacy that I've been able to do in front of these two very busy clinics, I have encountered many different scenarios. So um, while I'm not an expert, I am skilled and well-trained because of Sidewalk Advocates for Life. Now, we are told in scripture to count the cost. Let's not forget that. Luke 14, 28 through 31 says this, but don't begin until you count the cost for who will begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. Or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 could defeat the 20,000 soldiers marching against him. We often say that abortion is a giant, right? That it's a David and Goliath fight. This scripture speaks to that. And then there were nine Pearl of Ministries and Sidewalk Advocates for Life. We have counted the cost. Many of you have counted the cost. We've sat with counselors and consultants and mentors and the Lord, and we've gained a strategy. We want to ensure that we can afford to finish. What does this mean? The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Now let's link arms and work smarter and not harder by employing these God-given strategies. Stick to the plan. Be consistent. Follow the plan. And watch what God does with your obedience and faithfulness. There is nothing great and wonderful about any of us. As a matter of fact, I always say I'm a foolish thing that the Lord has used to confound the, the wisdom of those who think they're really smart. Um, I am nothing special. All I have is faithfulness. I've just shown up over and over and over again. Now we've got the source. That's God. We've got the resources through Pearl of Ministries, and then number nine, and Sidewalk Advocates for Life, we just need your yes. You don't have to be like me trying to figure it out on your own. We've all already done that. Lauren's done it. Abby's done it. We've made the mistakes so that you don't have to. We want you to trust us. We want you to trust the God in us. So you don't have to be everything to these women and workers. We don't want you to do that. And as a matter of fact, you're going to feel pretty defeated quickly by trying to do that. So if the Lord called you to be a sidewalk advocate, then you are crisis intervention. If the Lord's tugging at your heart to get involved in some other way, then I recommend Amy Ford's book to you, Help Her Be Brave, Discover Your Place in the Pro-Life Movement. But don't grow weary of doing good, whatever you do. I remind people consistently that it took eight years for Abby Johnson to leave Planned Parenthood. Eight years with a peaceful presence in front of her clinic, peppered with some of our more tenacious brothers and sisters. Sue Thayer was inside the walls of a Planned Parenthood clinic for 18 years. Myra Rodriguez for 17 years. And she was given her information by a sidewalk advocate. The best way to close an abortion facility, serve women and love workers. It's supply and demand folks, just like Lauren said. If we decrease the demand for abortion by focusing on the women and the workers, then abortion becomes unthinkable. That's all I have, Nate. That's so awesome, Pam. Thank you so much. Such great in information, so encouraging. You know, I think it's just so key that we just circle back to what you were saying about how it's about support. It's about getting involved in the position that you can play that is uniquely for you. I took some notes while Pam was talking, you know, that we would see people, all people as image bearers, and that we would find opportunities to do something. You know, God has called each of us to do something, to get involved in some way. It's a unique way that he's gifted us for. 
it's not going to be exactly the same. But as you can see through what Pam is saying, through what Lauren has said, and through Abby's testimonies as well, when we just say yes to, to God, he desires to take that yes and to do miraculous things. It's not about how polished we are, how great we have become, but it's about what he can do with our yes. Thanks so much again, Pam, for all that you do. At this time, we want to play with, for you a one minute video from former Planned Parenthood director, Abby Johnson herself, who talks about how this approach is so devastating to the abortion industry. Abby shared these thoughts at one of our last webcast events, and we couldn't resist sharing with them, um, sharing this with you again, to help underscore how effective God's people are when they're at the ready with real help and real hope. Pam and Lauren, if you'll remember to mute your line for this video. This is a program that, that people need to pay attention to because it is devastating to the abortion industry. It's not about any of us, right? I mean, this is about doing what the Holy Spirit leads us to do. God wants us to do this work well. He wants us to do it consistently. He wants us to be persistent and he wants us to do what is most effective. The strategy that you guys have come up with is in fact effective. I watched it inside the clinic for eight years and I've been on the outside of the clinic for 11. I've watched people on the sidewalk from inside of an abortion clinic director's window. I can tell you this strategy works and it's the most effective strategy I've ever seen on the sidewalk. Well, there you have it, folks. You hear it right there, right? You've heard it from Abby. You hear it from Pam. Sidewalk Advocates for Life. How devastating it is to the abortion industry and out of love for these mothers, children, and workers is now offering to partner with you. That's our desire, to partner with you to cover every uncovered abortion facility in the country. Let me bring Lauren back in here to help explain a little more about our plan to cover all uncovered facilities in the U.S. Lauren? Man, I was just sitting here blown away by what uh, Pam has had shared with us. You know, I, I actually do think Pam is very special and it is because of the heroic yes that she's given to God and God makes such great use of all of her gifts and talents. And I think of so many wonderful souls who are on the line with us tonight and just know that whether you're an introvert or extrovert, you're a man or a woman, you consider yourself young or old, God can use you to move mountains out on the sidewalk. And whether you decide to you know, join us at Sidewalk Advocates for Life on the sidewalk, or you're someone who's just going to be cheering this effort on, no matter what role you're called to play in the greatest human rights movement on the sidewalk, we celebrate that. We're here with you. We're excited to join hands with you tonight. However, in partnership that you feel called, uh, you know, to join with us in this great movement to save lives and to end abortion, we are excited and we are privileged tonight. Um, you know, we announced months ago that we had really now years, I guess it's been uh, time passes uh, quickly, seemingly uh, these days. Right. <laughs> Getting ready to head into 2022, if any of you can believe that. But, you know, we have the professed vision to cover every uncovered abortion facility in the United States and beyond, not for our sake, but for his glory. Um, supplying saints on the front lines, all of you with the necessary training tools and support to be successful in the mission, the call that God has given you, of course, all underscored through the power of prayer. What we're sharing with you tonight is absolutely huge. Um, in fact, when I explained this to our attorney at the Thomas More Society, um, a great man named Martin Cannon, who goes to bat for all of our sidewalk advocates to make sure that their First Amendment rights are protected, he honestly stopped for a moment and he said, if I had a million dollars, I would give it to you right now. He's like, Lauren, this is genius. So I'm not going to get into all the intricacies of exactly how we're doing this. If you want to reach out personally to one of us on the national team, we'll give you kind of the long version of this. But in short, 
we at Sidewalk Advocates for Life have figured out a new regional model that is allowing us to cover more abortion facilities faster. And in fact, in, a, in, a, in employing this new regional model, we are now getting ready, okay, hold your breath, <laughs> to cover instantly 24 abortion facilities in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area alone, number three in the nation for abortion. This is a strategic model that is clear that it's going to work and we're going to start taking around the country. The only thing holding us back from getting to the next area saturated with abortion facilities, the only thing holding us back tonight is funding. A lot of people don't realize that it's not cheap to train, equip, and support a team of sidewalk advocates at an abortion facility, but you better believe to us it's worth it. We do count the cost. Uh, we figured out that it costs about $2,000 per site, so per team of sidewalk advocates, where we're training dozens of sidewalk advocates in a community per year to deliver our program and then support them over the long haul, right? But here's how you can help. So here's the big news. A generous group of ministry partners who knows the ins and outs of this regional model, they have come together to challenge all of us for his glory, to move this work forward so that we can be a gateway to all of the services that Pam talked about tonight. A lot of people don't even realize that the emergency room for them exists, right? And so when we go to the sidewalk and we say, We've got this help available to you. I mean, this just happened, like Nate said, when, when part of our team went to Miami, Fort Lauderdale to start setting up these sites. I actually experienced one of those turnaways the second day on the sidewalk. I offered a woman free pregnancy services and she immediately said yes. If I had not been there, and again, I'm nothing special, but if I had not been there at the ready with concrete help and hope, she was inches away from walking through the front door of an abortion facility and instead chose life-affirming services for her baby. There were two turnarounds when we were just there looking at abortion facilities in Miami, Fort Lauderdale. So here's what's amazing. A $100,000 matching fund opportunity challenging all of us to help to cover more abortion facilities so that people know that this real concrete help and hope exists. So everything that you give starting right now over the next few weeks will be matched dollar for dollar. So incredible. So right now, if you feel called to partner with us in this great work, to see that there's no abortion facility in the United States that remains uncovered, that we can put God's people in front of every uncovered abortion facility in the United States, we invite you to click the offer button there and then you'll see pop up the make a gift button. And when you click that, it will open another window and you'll be able to make a tax deductible life-saving gift of support. So once again, if you're on a desktop or laptop computer, it's gonna open a separate window. Just note that if you are on a mobile device, it may redirect you temporarily, but then you can hit back and get right back into the webcast. And of course, if you're somebody who says, I'm called to the sidewalk, we are ready to go to bat for you in that regard too. You can go to sidewalkadvocates.org and you can either click apply to start your own team of sidewalk advocates at your local abortion facility, or you can click locations to find an existing team near you to get trained as a sidewalk advocate. But again, we know that so many of you cannot get to the sidewalk because of your particular vocation or station in life. This is your way of getting to the sidewalk. You know, I remember a ministry partner came to me and he gave us $5,000 and I'll never forget what he said. He said, Lauren, I wish I could get to the sidewalk, but my job is very demanding. I'm raising a family. I have three little boys. This is my way of getting to the sidewalk. And I just, I never forgot that, that when I go to the sidewalk, I carry Andrew with me because it's Andrew that enabled us to get to Miami, Fort Lauderdale. It's Charlotte who enabled us to get to Miami, Fort Lauderdale. I carry these people in my heart with me because they're the heroes that are making this work happen. And I know that God may very well call you to be one of the heroes that helps make this work possible, right? Again, we're trying to go from 214 locations to about 700, right? 
even then we may not need to cover them all because there's a handful that are covered in a peaceful manner by regional groups and of course we're not going to take that over but a lot of people are coming to us even if they have an existing presence because they need the additional support you know this is a spiritual battle right but again about two thousand dollars per site to train equip and support that location tonight you have an opportunity to say yes to god in a special way to help us get more of these outreach teams in front of these abortion facilities and on average when we get a new group started we we see on average uh, about 20 lives saved and sometimes many more than that. So think about that tonight, that you may be responsible for a live or multiple lives that are here because of your sacrifice. So once again, you can click offers then the make a gift button. Um, some of you may be asking yourself, how does Sidewalk Advocates for Life do this? You know, 214 locations, could we get to covering every uncovered abortion facility in the United States? And what I wanna let you know is that we don't just have this professed vision from God, but also the infrastructure now to be able to run and to cover many facilities. Again, especially using this new regional model. We already cover one third of all US abortion facilities, about one third, and now aiming to be at all uncovered facilities as soon as possible. So think about this. If by God's grace, we've seen nearly 13,500 babies saved in just seven years on the sidewalk. So that's like, what is that? Like 675 kindergarten classes, right? Of children saved as we've grown to 214 locations. I mean, can you imagine the life-saving impact, how much it'll devastate the abortion industry if we can grow to cover additional facilities and ensure that no mother or father enters a facility without knowing real help and hope. So once again, a, a matching fund challenge of $100,000 starting right now, you can make your gift. And I know that everyone is probably called to something different. Maybe a sacrifice for you is $100. For some, it'll be 1,000. For others, they, they will say, you know what, I'm gonna give up a dinner a month. Um, maybe maybe that's easy in the time of COVID, right? Maybe it's a couple to go orders a month so that you know we can see more miracles together in partnership through God's grace as we look to end abortion in more communities. I don't know what that is for you, uh, but rest assured, no gift is too small, no gift is too large. And as the president and CEO of this organization, my promise to you tonight is that every penny will be stretched to help reach as many mothers in crisis as possible, to help save as many children as possible. So once again, click that offer uh, button. You can go to the make a gift button and it'll take you to, to our secure online giving site where you can make a life-saving gift of support. Um, so again, we thank you ahead of time for whatever you can do here in just a little bit. I actually wanna go ahead and I'll, you know, keep your, your, your full name confidential, but I'll just say first name and uh, maybe your state, just to say thank you, just to give you a shout out for partnering uh, with us tonight in this great effort. Uh, we wanna recognize you and recognize your sacrifice tonight. So um, Nate, I know we need to close in prayer here. And most importantly, we gotta pray over everything that's been shared tonight. So let me pass the baton back to you as we get ready to pray uh, and help others discern their call. Yeah, absolutely. Again, just so great to have all of you joining us tonight and just the incredible information we've been able to share about what God is doing and, and how we are able to continue to move this forward. So if you would, while, while you guys are um, really discerning what God is calling you to do, and just in the spirit of the unity that we have here tonight, let's just join for a moment of prayer and then Lord, I'll throw it back to you. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have had to be here this evening and and be, um, be able to be a part of this great event and to hear what you are doing through Sawak Advocates for Life, what you've been doing through Pro Love Ministries and and then there were none and, and how we work so well together to continue to move forward in seeing abortion become unthinkable in our local communities. God, thank you for what you've already done. The 27 abortion facilities cl closed, the over 13,000 women and, and families have been saved from abortion and the abortion workers that have left the industry. And it's just the beginning. We thank you that we know that we have victory because you are the one that we claim as our Lord and that you are the one who drives us forward. God, we thank you for the effort that has already taken place and the efforts ahead. We thank you for what you are going to continue to do as we continue to see more and more abortion facilities covered with a peaceful, prayerful, loving presence with those outreaching to women and men entering and exiting those facilities. God, we're so excited to 
to see the day of 300 abortion facilities closed and 400 and 500 all the way until every abortion facility is closed. God, continue to give us the grace, continue to give us the ministry partners to make this goal possible. Continue to grow our teams so that we can do everything that you've called us to do. We'll continue to always give you the glory and the honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Well, uh, I do want to say something really quick. Uh, I know that in the chat, there's been some interesting things said. I think that there are some pro-abortion individuals indeed who did join us tonight. And what I want y'all to know is that we love you. And Absolutely. if you have experienced abortion, uh, maybe Pam can put it there in uh, the chat or Nate, um, please go to supportafterabortion.com. We would love to be there for you. Um, we would love to serve you. We know a lot of you are here because um, uh, you've been through this. And um, and we want you to know that there is hope and healing. That's right. And yeah. you don't have to come on here and cause problems. We're not your enemy. That's We're right. not going to be the people causing problems out on the sidewalk. Um we're going to be the people reminding you that many of us have walked in your shoes. Many of us have a testimony. Many of us are doing what we're doing uh, because we've been there. But on the other side, we want you to know that there really is healing and restoration. So we love you all, whoever you are, how, what, however you identify, whatever you call yourself tonight, whatever side of the fence that you picked, um, we're here for you too. So please check out supportafterabortion.com. And I'll tell you, um, I'll, I'll share one more story because you know when we're out on the sidewalk, um, we, we don't always see someone choose life. Um, you know, I talked to a girl on the sidewalk in Miami. This was actually right before this other woman turned around. So if I had just, you know, thrown my hands up in the air and gone home, I would have missed that victory, right? Um, but this young woman, 18 years old, and she was being pressured by her mother to keep her figure and not have the abortion. She was pressured by her mother to keep her plans. And as I was looking at this young woman, I could see that she was crushed. She was crushed by a culture, by a family culture that was putting pressure on her to be at the abortion facility. She wasn't skipping in there talking about choice. She wasn't excited to be there. She was devastated. And it's so hard because I kept offering her help. I kept offering her solutions. I let her know that we loved her. I let her know that um, we were ready to do whatever it took to make a plan so that she could continue with, um, you know, all of the dreams that she had and still have her baby. That's the great lie that we as women have to take the lives of our children to get the, the life that we want. Right. Um, so I offered her everything that I possibly could have. And yet it was so hard for her as I saw her mother behind her shoulder um, to really accept hope. But what I'm really proud of is the next day. So after her abortion, um, we had traded phone numbers. We had actually built such a rapport that she accepted my phone number. <clears throat> and I sent her the link to support after abortion. And I let her know that it was a pleasure to meet her on the sidewalk, that I'm sure she had been through a lot, that I was still there for her in the same way. Um, and she hasn't written me back, but she also hasn't pushed me away. And so I just planted that seed. So I ask you to pray tonight for, for mom A. I'm not even going to say her first name, even though a million people probably have her name in Miami. <laughs> um, but pray for mom A, because those are tough. The ones that you talk to for a long time and they don't choose life. But what we remember is that God isn't done with their story and that so many of us are on the sidewalk next to people. I mean, I, I, I used to have a partner that had four abortions in her past. I used to serve in a ministry with a woman who had experienced abortion seven times and it's now their glory story. And they talk about what Jesus has done in their lives. And um, they are some of the best, most amazing people I've ever met in my life. And they're allowing God to use them now in a more, a more profound, powerful way than probably he could even use me. So 
Um, it's not the end of her story. God is going to continue to pursue her. And I just ask tonight that you pray for her healing and the healing of all those who have experienced abortion, because I think we're seeing some of the evidence of that on the chat tonight. So um, let me go ahead and just take a moment. I want to thank a couple of people. I know we've got to close tonight, but I want to thank a couple of people, actually many people who have um, given of their precious treasure to move this uh, effort forward. So let me go ahead and thank uh, let's thank Evelyn in Colorado. Thank you, Evelyn, for your uh, gift. And I know that you just signed up again for a monthly gift, a, a real blessing to have your support. Landon in Iowa, we appreciate you as well. Uh, Lawrence in uh, uh, Texas. Thank you, Lawrence. That was a very generous gift. Um, we'll be able to start a brand new team, uh, actually, with that support. Thank you very much. Uh, for Brenda in Oregon, thank you for your sacrifice tonight, Brenda. Really appreciate you. Uh, Francis in uh, Illinois, really appreciate your support as well, Francis. Thank you. Christy has partnered with us out of Texas tonight. Thank you, Christy. Um, we really are moved by your support. Catherine in Nebraska. Thank you, Catherine. I, I know who you are. <laughs> Pretty sure I know who you are. So thank you for your support as well. Kim in Colorado. Uh, we're so blessed. Appreciate you. Julie in Utah. Really appreciate it, Julie. Thanks for thinking of us tonight. Uh, Mark in Illinois. Big shout out to you as well, Mark. Appreciate it. Pat in Ohio. Uh, Gosh, I mean, I'm just so humbled by all of this support. This is a huge blessing. And, and already we're going to be able to start uh, another couple of teams of sidewalk advocates from what is coming in here. Uh, Yvonne in Kentucky will be able to start a new brand new team. I just saw this um, because of your sacrifice tonight. I'm almost moved to tears seeing all this support. It's really a blessing. Uh, William in uh, Florida. Thank you, William. Huge, huge, huge blessing as well. Laura in New Jersey. Appreciate your support. Laura in Colorado. Goodness. Oh, thank you, Laura. Harriet in Texas. Love all the Texans who are showing up tonight. Thank you so much. Josephine in Oklahoma, huge thanks to you. Luis in Maryland, oh my goodness, this just keeps going. I'm just really, really so moved by all of this tonight. Thank you all very much for your support. We really appreciate you. Um, can't do it without you. So, um, so good, so good. So let me end with a story and then we'll go ahead and close out tonight. You know, the very first abortion worker who uh, left, the first recorded worker who left um, was a woman in Florida. and. Uh, there was a young uh, man that had actually been going out to the sidewalk for a while. Let's just say he was one of the more tenacious folks, as Pam puts it, out on the sidewalk for years. And he went through the Sidewalk Advocates for Life training and he came out and he said, you know what, I want to do this differently. I don't know that I've been reaching out in as loving of a manner as I could be. And because of that, you know, maybe I could have seen more fruit. So he made a decision to do something different on the sidewalk and to reach out to workers, especially and clients in love. And he started reaching out to this one worker and they actually became uh, good friends. And that worker uh, made the decision to leave. And it was a Friday that she walked out of the abortion business. And when she walked out that day, she looked at the sidewalk full of sidewalk advocates and other prayer volunteers. And she went down the sidewalk and she hugged every single person on the sidewalk. And then she backed up and she looked at the crowd and she said, don't stop doing what you're doing. Women are changing their minds. And I just, I've never forgotten that. Almost like that is our battle cry. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Women are changing their minds. And this team in Florida had actually seen a, a fair amount of, of women turn around, but they gleaned from her statement that there were far more more clients and, and you know even workers who were being affected than they could possibly imagine. And so that's what I want to say to all of you tonight, whether you're on the sidewalk or whether you're a ministry partner, whatever role you're called to play, it's all important. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Women are changing their minds. So thank you all so much for being with us tonight. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you would pray uh, through this campaign, this uh, matching fund challenge will be here through the end of the month. Um, so, you know, watch us at sidewalkadvocates.org. Watch that thermometer and that ticker. And if you would pray us through to victory so that we can indeed move on uh, to the next area and we can take up another 24 abortion facilities. We look forward to it. So. 
All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Nate. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Have evening. Have a good night.